You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 5. It's the best of, worst of, Season 2. Yeah, there's there's some worst ofs in here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so these are, there's going to be five volumes of Season 2 best ofs that continue from the Season 1 best ofs. And we are going to get right into it. <laughs> Enjoy the show, you everybody. Mean business, man. Moments, Volume 5 edition of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT, the I-N-O, M-I-D-H-T. What's going on, guys? Nothing. We're getting into some best of, worst of, mediocre of, season two. That sounds like you have a lot going. That sounds like not nothing. Yeah, right, I guess nothing. (laughs) That's not nothing. All right, before we jump into all these, uh, please make sure you follow us on Twitch so you can catch season three of the podcast live. Twitch.tv forward slash Crazy Town Media. And then on YouTube, it is Crazy Town Media is our channel with all of our gaming videos, podcasts, and everything else. Also on Twitter at Crazy Town Media. TNT. Huh? The first segment comes from episode 20. Okay. We talked about. A little lady who was a stalker. Oh, that one. Yeah, she was stalking. All right, yeah. 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 You fucked up and called me my pet name. I had to beep it out. <laughs> you know, I, fucking, I, 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 I caught you off guard with something. Sometimes. Some genuine laughs. Sometimes. So, yeah, a fine young lady uh, took things a little too far when she met a man on an online dating site. Oh, no, wait. According to Chachi, it's okay because you put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right for her to do what you yep, did. Yep, yep, So, all right, we'll let you get to it, and we'll be right back to discuss it a little bit. Where am I? So, TNT, let me ask you a serious question. A serious one. Have you ever been stalked? Stocked by a female. Like, have you ever had a female obsessed with you to the point where, like, you had to, like, I mean, I, I don't think you've ever had, like, had to put a restraining order on somebody. Have you ever had a chick, like, overstep her bounds? Like, she was just yeah. fucking a stalker. You know what I mean? A stalker. Like, I not guess. to the point where you had to intervene the law. Cause, I mean, that's, like, legit stalking at that point. Well, but, I mean, have you ever had someone who was either obsessive or, I mean, I guess I don't know. Have you ever had to fucking file a restraining order? No, nothing that bad. But I've had women who were infatuated, I guess, to the point of like, chick, you gotta leave me alone. And then did they do it, or how long? How many times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but so you've never, so you've never had a chick where you've told them you gotta leave me alone, and they just wouldn't. No, no, nothing like that. Oh, have you? No, I have not. No, have you ever been that guy? <laughs> <laughs> So what's the story? Because <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> no, I've never stalked anybody. No, Jeez, I've never stalked not in this climate, especially. Woo! I know, right? Climates. <laughs> it's fucking block is hot <laughs> in America. Woo! I've never had a restraining order. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Better not tell anybody they look nice. Or yeah, right. Can't even. Anybody I told that knee. girl at the grocery store yesterday that her dress looked nice. I thought she was going to accost me. I'm surprised they didn't arrest you on the spot. I was like, oh, your dress looks cute. She was like... I'm going to go tell fucking security <laughs> if you don't leave me alone. No, she, That's it, motherfucker. That's enough of that. No, she actually thanked me very much and had a, the most glowing smile I think I've ever seen on somebody's face. Until you, until you get a subpoena in the mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the, she fucking uh, – she took my picture, going to fucking face match it and going to get my address and send me a fucking restraining order. Through. He told me my dress looked cute in Walmart. He is a piece of shit. You know? Possibility. Yeah, you never know. So, so in Arizona or Florida – Florida, Arizona. I like that. Yeah. I do. I approve. Everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Woman named Jacqueline Otis. Mm. She met a man on a dating site. Mm -hmm. How fucking sweet. Arizona. Have you ever used a dating site before? Yeah, I used POF. I've used Tinder. Uh, 
I've, yeah, I've used POF, okay, keep it and Tinder because they're all free and I'm cheap. I want the, I want the girls that don't want to pay for love. If you know what I'm saying? God, what a bad joke. <laughs> It is no, I'm is. joking. Uh, I think free dating sites are fine because uh, you can do the same thing you can do on the fucking pay ones. What happened with Jackie? What did she what, did she uh, meet the man of her dreams? Fall in well, love? What when they when she got a, they got a statement from her about this whole situation before I go into it. it said I felt like I met my soulmate, Aww. and I thought we would just do what everyone else did, and we would get married, and everything oh, else would be God. fine. Is this that chick? It is okay. <laughs> the only problem is the only problem is the guy didn't quite feel the same about her. Yeah. He actually didn't have any want anything to do with her. So when she started showing up at his home, oh, that's and his work, mm, not a good look. And the police had to uh, escort her away a couple times. Mm. But she loved him. And then she – but she loved him, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, but but come on. I love you. Like, I mean, it's okay to be everywhere if you love someone. You know, when the tables are turned and it's the woman that's a stalker, not the man, it's less scary, but it's definitely equally as creepy. It really is. Yeah. It's equally as creepy. It really, really is. But yeah, it, because – well, yeah, I think it's less scary because, like – you always hear the stories about the guy breaking in and raping the woman, blah, yeah. you know, things like that. But, like, it would be a lot harder for the woman to break in and rape the man, you would think. I mean, just I mean, just on basic. That's true, man. You know what I mean? It's like. It's true. But, okay, let me ask you a question. Well, she splints your dick. Yeah, she, she. Wow. <laughs> comes in, stabs you, then rapes you. But you still got to get it up. No, so. I didn't say split and splint. She oh. thinks like a fucking stick. And like... Oh, I thought you said split your dick. I was like. say that? <laughs> I don't know why you say some things you say. Uh, okay. Fair so enough. let me ask you a question. Yo. So you have a stalker. She okay. She's showing up at your house and work. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, okay. yes. Yeah. You, uh, one night, you're laying in your bed. She knocks on your bedroom door. She's in the house. Mm. But she's naked. Mm -hmm. And she's like, fuck, man. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, I said at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> the universe is against me when it comes to that, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and smash. <laughs> You're like, I know, it's just going to enable her even more to, like, want <laughs> So if you feed the stock, does that make you partly fucking accountable for the action? The way you're pronouncing that. <laughs> feed the stock. <laughs> Sounds like a weird way to talk about getting laid. Yeah. Feeding the stock. Sounds like you're in Wall Street, the stock. No, S T A L K, not S T O C K. Well, say it again. Feeding the stock. Stalk. Yeah, stock, not stock. It's stalk. Because it's S T A L K. All right, maybe I'm. Just, it's like a stalk of corn. Maybe it just sounds different. If I was going to mouth. the stock market, that's different than the stalk of corn. It's A L K, not O C K. I know how to. Everybody knows how to spell but it. But I'm it saying that was weird coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Why would I say that one day about 60 seconds or he fucking went on for like some about 20? Like, that sounds weird. Oh, wait, one sixtieth of 10% of 10 seconds or some shit? Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, the man finally called the, like, the police on her like to have real action taken after surveillance footage at his home showed she took a bath in his house while he was out of the country. Mm. So she just broke in, took a little bath. She was dirty. She wanted to get she clean. She wanted to get clean in his house. No, she just wanted to prep so that when he got home, she would be clean for him. Right. Like, she left all her shaved She was thinking about tub. him, not it's herself. Like, it's like when you're a guy and you shave and there's fucking, like, hair in the sink. She, like, shaved and left her pubes in his tub. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he'd walk in and be like, God damn it, Margaret. How many times have I told you to shave your pubes out of the tub? That, you know, <laughs> I'm standing, you know, Jonas. <laughs> That was so. That was so organic too. You know, Jonas. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe she left pubes as a gift, as an offering to <laughs> entice him. I, I know I got you good when you fuck <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> no, you fucking made me break. You made me break character. I'm sorry you have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm gonna do is just clip it. I, I'm, I'm gonna leave all this talk about it in. Yeah, yeah, I accidentally did it. Yeah, he called me my pet <sighs> the, name. The fucking pube offering was just... <laughs> Whew, too much. 
<laughs> like a cat bringing home a mouse. <laughs> yeah, right. She just left her. She just <laughs> brought a fucking plastic <laughs> sandwich sh- baggie of pubes and sprinkled it around his bed. So. <laughs> no, she shaved it's, in the tub and let it just. Even so better. So it's attached to the side. It's fresh. It's all dried on and shit. Exactly. Like, ew. So gross. So, oh, by the way, she also she also sent him 65,000 text messages yeah, yeah. over uh, sometimes upwards of 500 a day. That's, that's, that's way too many texts. So, okay, 500 a day. That's like, oh, my God, it's like 20 an hour over a 20-hour period or 24-hour period. Like, And you know she slept some. So she was probably sending him one, and even twenty an hour is every five minutes. I want to know what the text said. Like, oh, I got fuck, a couple. I what got the a couple. Fuck can you say thirty six hundred thirty six thousand times? What, when they asked her if she thought that that was a lot of text messages, what she replied was, "Love is not perfect, and I love him." That was her response about. Don't you think sixty five thousand text messages is a little excessive? Love is not perfect. Sounds like a crazy ass bitch. She left Pew. Well, obviously. <laughs> she's she's already committed to X. We don't need her to sound like a duck. She's flying and <laughs> fucking laying eggs all over the place. Did ducks lay <laughs> eggs? <laughs> what? I'm just fucking <laughs> I hate you. All right, so what were some of the text messages? Because I want to know what she said. Give um, me some examples. She, it says per the court documents. It does. Uh the one that she I only have one specific text message. I want your blood so I could bathe. Oh, I would bathe in it. That was one of the text messages. She said, I want your blood. Oh, I will bathe in it? Yes. That was one of them. What the <laughs> fuck kind of shit is that? <laughs> That's a stalker-ass message. Bitch, I got running water. <laughs> you already took a fucking shower in the house, and now you want to bathe in my blood? I, just by look on your face, you weren't expecting that. One. No, you I was expect- expecting her to be like, "I love you so much, please." You know, typical- like begging him to like, well, well like me, yeah, like. Oh no, it said that stuff. she started threatening him, like because he wouldn't like accept her advances, so she was threatening him on top of like all of this other stuff. Oh. And she also sent anti-Semitic remarks. I don't know if the guy was Jewish or not, mm-hmm. claiming that she was the new Hitler. Oh, <laughs> so I don't know. She was Roseanne. Oh, so she's crazy. <laughs> Well, if you're sent if you send sixty five thousand text messages to anyone, probably a little crazy. Yeah, but you know, you never really expect anybody to just get like fucking homicidal with their text, even if they're like feeling you. Right. Yeah. You well, know? yeah. It's one thing for for a chick to like constantly want to text you and talk to you. It's another like then all of a sudden they turn and they're just like, I want your fucking blood. Exactly. <laughs> like, they, all of a sudden it turns into a guar concert in their fucking head. Could you I'm imagine, just... dude? Fucking, you're like, oh, here comes fucking Trina again. It's like <laughs> beep 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 beep. I love you. I want you. This fucking oh my god, yeah. this chick will leave me alone. I want your fucking blood. See, now, now that, that, that took a scary turn because some chick was talking about she wanted my fucking blood and she was going to hurt me or you. Well, well that'd be okay. But. What? <laughs> she said she didn't want to hurt him. She just sent the threatening text messages because she didn't want him to leave. Because mm. that's, that's, that's how it works. That's clear thought. Usually we, you send threats because you don't want people to leave. Yeah. Like when I'm at work and my boss doesn't want me to leave because they need me to stay and do more stuff, they just say they just go out and slip my tires. <laughs> right. Oh. <But> now you <laughs> can't. I just put my hands on my hips and shake my head. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> now I can't leave. Guess I'm staying here, and we make out. Okay, that's all I got for this story. The Crazy Town Podcast. I got you with the pube offering. <laughs> that's what fucking that's what fucking took you over the top i caught you off guard man you you know how to, to get in my, <laughs> my heart <laughs> you know you know the key to my heart there. sometimes man you keep a pretty good fucking uh what do they call that a uh, frame but sometimes <laughs> dude if i can catch you so all right up next from episode two chach mm. on this on this clip we talk about an unfortunate lotto winner named abraham I don't remember this. You don't remember this one? Well, it was a story sent by a fan, and I did – the story sent by the fan was just a quick little tidbit at the end, but we did a whole backstory. Uh, Abraham was with a coworker, and he bought a uh, lottery ticket. He had the coworker going to buy the lottery ticket for him at the convenience store. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some some tragic things end up happening to Abraham. What tragic things, you asked TNT? You didn't ask, but I'm going to imply you did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Find out <laughs> right after this clip. Okay. 
I have an article that a fan of the show sent me that they wanted uh, me to talk about, but I want to do a little bit of backstory on it first. Naturally. Yeah. The guy's name is Andy. He's from Los Angeles. He sent me this article, so I want to say thanks to Andy for sending me an article to talk about on the show. So, uh, first off, the man that I want to talk about is Abraham Shakespeare. Wow, two historic names combined. <laughs> right? Right. And that legitimately is this dude's real name. And uh, he's actually from Florida. Go figure. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes more sense. So, as you know, anything from Florida we talk about on the show, like the crazy fucking bridesmaid and all that other stuff, this show, this show, this this article is pretty crazy. So the backstory on Abraham Shakespeare. He was a regular man. He happened to stop at the store one day and had a buddy go in and buy two dollars worth of lottery tickets with the five dollars he had on him. Uh huh. So he, uh, you know, they stopped. They were working or some shit. They were driving, and he's and they stopped off the freeway in a small town to buy like a drink and some smokes. So he he took two bucks. He bought some tickets. He and won, he won a billion dollars. He, he won $30 million. Yeah, good for him, dude. Right, right. So he, he ended up taking the $17 million cash option, you know, that you never probably. get you know, all the taxes and whatever. Yeah, probably wouldn't have took that myself. I think you have to pick up front if you're going to take the payments. Yeah, but, but if it's like half of your money, dude, I'm probably going to take the, the annuities. Yeah, man, if you could get, like, like, I was thinking about that, because the Powerball was just, like, 700 fucking million dollars. Yeah. You know, if you took the cash, like, if you if you take the yearly payments, mm. um, you know, you know, that, it would be, like, you'd get, like, a few million dollars a year for, like, 30 years. Like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Think, like, why would you need 700 million up front? I mean, like, I'd be cool with, like, 500,000 up front. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think that could last me to the next year. What about you, Josh? Could you think five hundred thousand could last you the next year when you get five hundred more thousand? Yeah, definitely. Well, once you got money like that coming in, you're buying everything on credit anyway. Well, you're right. good for it. I mean, if you invest it, you're getting return on investment, so you don't even really need the money that's coming in every year. But whatever. Yeah. So, as with most lotto winners, his life began to fall apart. <laughs> oh man. The first thing that happens to him, the guy who actually bought the ticket for him ends up suing him. I knew it. Yes. Saying, well, okay, the guy, okay, the guy went to Shakespeare and said, dude, I just want a million dollars. And the guy wouldn't give him a million dollars. So then he tried to sue him saying that, but he was started lying and saying Shakespeare stole it out of his wallet and all this other stuff. I think if the dude would have sued him and just said, I'm the one who physically bought the ticket for him, they may have legitimately gave him a million dollars. Yeah, you should have just gave him a million for buying the ticket. Right. So, so, I mean, I wanted to ask both of you, how do you feel about that? Like, if you like, obviously, if Shakespeare would have got out of the car himself and walked in and bought the ticket, and he was with someone, I mean that that is what it is. But this other person technically bought the ticket, and now Shakespeare said he gave him the two dollars. Like as soon as he got in the car, he's like, "Here's the two bucks for the ticket." And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, <laughs> but do you think they? I mean, like, man, that's a weird situation because technically the other guy bought the ticket. Touch. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, right? no. Me, me personally, if if you got, if one of you two bought a ticket for me and I won seventeen million dollars, congratulations, you just earned yourself two million dollars at least, at least. Well, right. I mean, like, cause if it wasn't for us going in for you, you wouldn't have the damn ticket anyway. Exactly. But even if it was like someone I didn't even know, I was just like on a trip carpooling and. John fucking Smith went in and bought the ticket and gave it to me, and I gave him two bucks. I would feel obliged to at least give him a little bit of money. Exactly, and most of the time people hook up the uh, the clerk or the uh, the attendant, the cashier that sells them the ticket. That that cashier gets a, a, a usually gets a piece. I don't know if it's necessarily the person who won or maybe the uh, the a lot of a lot of themselves. The yeah, so I know the store back. gets money, but I, I know damn well if I went and bought a ticket and I won, 
I would go back to the store and probably at least give the girl who sold me the ticket, like, pay off her car or something. You know what I mean? At the very least. Oh, yeah. You know, like, hey, you sold me this ticket. You really didn't do shit but hit a button, but congratulations, you you got a little bit lucky, too. See, I'm like that. That's the way, that's, that's how I believe. That person was the one that sold me the ticket, so that person gets a cut. Right, I'm not saying they should get half or whatever. You yeah, know what spread, I mean? spread the wealth, man. Well, yeah. That's like that movie with Nicolas Cage where, like, he uh, he t- he tips Ghost the waitress. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he becomes a flaming skull superhero when he wins the lottery. Well, like, like I I hit uh, five hundred the other day or a couple weeks ago on an instant ticket. I went back and I gave the girl fifty bucks. Oh, nice. Was she surprised as fuck? Oh yeah. That's awesome. But when I used to sell lottery, people do that. Did she offer to give you an HJ for the fifty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Did she say I'm not that type of girl? <laughs> yeah, you go, in, <laughs> you go in and hand her fifty, and she goes, "Oh, I don't, I'm not that type of girl." <laughs> <laughs> no, she was stunned, but yeah. you know. Well, I mean, shit. Right. That's probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to her. Yeah, yeah. fifty bucks is fifty bucks. So anyway, so that was just the first part of the story. So he won the court case because obviously the dude went at, about it a shady way, saying that Shakespeare stole the ticket and blah blah blah, and it was obviously a lie. <clears throat> After that happens, he he moves out of his normal neighborhood and into like a gated community because I mean at that point, once people know you have money, you can't just live like on like Main Street anymore. You know what I mean? You have to like get yeah. yeah. Be protected. So and why would you want to anyway? Well, right, exactly. So what it said in the article about this guy, not the article Andy sent me, uh, this dude didn't really make a lot of major purchases. It said that he bought like a million dollar house, he bought an Acura, and he bought a Rolex from a pawn shop. So, <laughs> so other than that, he didn't really buy a lot of things. But then in 2009, I, th- I think he won this in 2008, I think, something like that. In 2009, he disappears. Dun, dun, dun. I smell foul play. Whoa, yes. There is a – he had a business associate who I, – I don't remember her real name. It's not really It's not really relevant. But she went by Dee Dee. So I'm totally going to refer to her as Baby D for the rest of this story. <laughs> That's a murder <laughs> name. That's a murder name. Right. So – but this dude, dude guys – this woman was a shyster. So here, here's the timeline of event. The fuck is a shyster? You've never heard <laughs> what a shyster is? It's like a, it's like a con man, a trickster, a, a no good rapscallion. Is that, is that Jewish in origin? A shyster? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I or don't know. German. Ooh, it could Ooh, be German. It, it's not, it's not shyzenster. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. So she was a grifter. She was, yes, she was a grifter. She was a con man. Con woman. Con Con woman. Con person. Con person. (laughs) Dude, who knows? She could be like Uncle Hussein and be (laughs) be pretending. If you want to know who Uncle Hussein is, check out season one of the Crazy Town podcast. I believe episode uh, 16, 17. Listen to them both. Maybe even 15. You found out that Jonas was related to Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> this whole relationship started. Um, she she didn't obviously didn't know him before he won the lotto. Go figure on that, right? Of course not. <clears throat> yeah. She uh she reaches out to him in October of 2008 and befriends him by saying she wants to write a book about him. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I don't think I've heard the story before, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, you probably have. It was a pretty big deal back when it happened. By January 2009, his million-dollar home is transferred into the name of her company. It was called American Ripoff Incorporated. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was called uh, American Medical Professionals, LLC. And somehow, with all of this, she ended up gaining control of his money as well. Oh, man. <clears throat> so basically, this dude was probably just like a pushover snowflake beta yeah. God. Yeah, was he like super old? A oh, beta. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he was just a dumb cuck. <laughs> God, I love that word. I do too, man. It's like my new favorite word. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I might do that next learning with dynamite. We but just no, did it was, now. Anyway, was he super old? He was. He he wasn't like super old. His picture, he looked he looked kind of old, but he wasn't like seventy. But anyways, or I mean, that's the moot point. So yeah. she gains control of his money. 
Uh, she ends up buying her boyfriend a brand new Camaro and herself a brand new Hummer by March. So nice. then, then <laughs> in April, Not suspicious at all. Right, right. Then in April, Abraham Shakespeare goes missing. I wonder who was responsible. <laughs> but what so so he, he, here's where it gets kind of weird. Like it's kind of kind of crazy. Uh uh-huh, uh uh-huh. So during the investigation, they go and talk to, to Baby D, and she tells mm-hmm. the cops that he decided to leave town because everyone was asking him for money. Which, oh I mean, yeah. Okay. Which is the only one she told. Right. Exactly. Well, <laughs> here, here, here's what she says. He's either gone to Texas. Or Jamaica, or Puerto Rico, or Orlando, or he was sick in the hospital. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. It said that she listed like five different places or said he was in the hospital. That's a wide array of places. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, I'll t- as I get into how crazy this lady is, you'll you'll see she wasn't a very smart person. Anyways, they end up finding Shakespeare buried under a patio she had built for her boyfriend. <laughs> Nice segue. (laughs) (laughs) So he was dead. Right. They found him dead under her patio. But, um, no, but but throughout this investigation, at different points, she blamed drug dealers for killing him. She Uh, blamed a lawyer. She even at one point blamed her own 14-year-old son. Wow, what a dirty, dirty woman. <laughs> right. And then later she even said she was the one who did it, but she did it in self-defense. <laughs> so which of those options would you have picked, Josh? Which which, which ones would you have said? <clears throat> That's what this is going to turn into? <laughs> That's where you're going with this? Yeah, I want to know how you – would you have said drug dealers did it, that a lawyer did it, your own 14-year-old child, or that you did it in self-defense? Yeah, Josh, would you blame your children? <laughs> <laughs> Papa Chach, Papa Chach Pizza. Yeah, my my litter. I would have blamed the drug dealers it's myself. Pumped on the kids though. That's kind of. I mean, that tells you how fucked. Oh, wait till I get to what else this lady did. You guys, no, this lady more. was a piece of shit. Like one hundred percent. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's I'll a lot. Say, more. I probably go with drug dealers. Drug dealers. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's probably the safest. But, uh, so, I was just curious. That really had nothing to do with what I want to talk about. I was just curious what you would do in that situation. After this dude was dead, she kept living in his house. Oh, okay. She was actually using his cell phone to text his relatives as though she was him, so they would think he was living. But, she must not have known Shakespeare too well, because this was a red flag to his family. Can you have any idea why um, her texting him as Abraham was a red flag to his family? Uh, because he didn't text anybody? He was illiterate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't read or write, so all of a sudden he's a texting machine after he's dead. Typical for most Floridians, actually, so yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to all of our Florida listeners. <laughs> oh, so... So, yeah, so this dude, he wins the fucking lottery from $2. He can't wow. even read the newspaper. Wow. I wonder if he could even read the num- – well, can illiterate people read numbers? I mean, I would I think so. I don't, I, I don't know. I would think they can read numbers. Those like, are relatively easy. I mean, easy. math is like the universal language, right? I mean, letters are relatively easy. Well, yeah, but not if you're illiterate. I don't think I don't think literacy is like an on off button. You can either read or you can't. I think he just probably couldn't read very well. That's yeah, that's what true. It is. it's not like he looked at words and were like, "What is this shit?" And then next yeah, day he's like, like "Oh, Pirate kidnapped." I, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. During this investigation, they also found out that Baby D offered one of Shakespeare's sons a two hundred thousand dollar home to say that she saw him recently, or that uh, he saw him recently. She also gave someone $5,000 to give his mother a birthday card from Shakespeare so she would think he was alive. Wow. Dirty. And then here's probably the most fucked up thing about this lady that I, that, that they found out. They found out during the investigation that previously in her life, uh, Baby D was about to have a car repoed. You know, which sucks. You know, someone's going to come take your car because you haven't paid the bill. Obviously, you aren't paying the bill, so you're in a bad spot, period. 
So she killed a salesman. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, that's just crazy. She did what, like, a normal person would do. She had someone store the car in the garage and then per- pretended she was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and carjacked. Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah. She yeah. taped She taped her own wrists and threw herself into the trunk of someone's car. <laughs> I wish I could uh, see that. Do we have video footage of that? Yeah, right. And, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and she even went as far to having a rape kit done on her to prove oh. she, she was sexually wow. assaulted. Wow. Okay. Best part about this, she pleaded no contest to all of that and only got probation. Oh. Fucking well, probation, guys. Where, that, where that's it. I just, it's people like that to just give the human race a bad name, man, you know? Right, right, right. Well, needless to say, she was convicted of murder, and she's serving yeah. life in prison without the possibility of... Oh, murder. thank God. Right, right, <laughs> Get that right. woman off the fucking streets. Yeah, no shit, dude. She's just 100% piece of shit, like, to the bone. Okay, now that was the backstory. <laughs> What, there's more? That was that was just giving you premise to what Abraham Shakespeare was. I was on this emotional roller coaster, dude, and he's still hitting me with info. Right, right. No, no, no. Uh, now here's the story that Andy sent me about the sto- about about this relatively. So the girlfriend that Shakespeare had when he died, his real actual girlfriend, mm-hmm. she just won a million dollars off a scratch off ticket. Nice, good for her. Yeah, but what it said about this lady, here's the part that was kind of weird about it. She she wrote, or she, when they interviewed about it, she didn't write it. When She said she spends $100 a day on the lottery normally. Where the fuck is this bitch getting three grand a month to spend on the lottery? $100 a day? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe she has a really good job. Yeah, playing the lotto. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I mean. If you spend a hundred dollars a day on the lotto, you're guaranteed to come out with maybe a quarter of your money. Yeah. In the fuck. Depends on what you're playing, but yes. Well, I think she played scratch offs. Yeah, the twenty dollars yeah. scratch off. Well, what, but yeah. what she said was the day that she won this million dollars, she only played twenty dollars that day, and it won her a million. Mm. So now she has seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars from a scratch off. Hey, that's a nice little come up. So what do you guys think of that story, man? Isn't that crazy? Oh, oh, God. That's good. I thought you were going to go even further, like she <laughs> came up dead. N- next thing you know, she was training <laughs> dolphins to speak English in the, in the Bahamas. I know, man. I can't take much more. Yeah, no, that, that, uh, that was it about that. But the shit that humans do to each other, man, especially for money. Crazy. I know, right? It's just insane. So, but th- I mean, that's all there is to that story. The Crazy Town Podcast. So yeah, TNT, winning the lotto is pretty fucked up, right? Hey, man, it's about who you keep around you. Yeah. During those, during those you times. know, sometimes you can get someone who murders you. <laughs> sometimes you can get people who want to take you out for cake. I figure you can get that just by, you know, walking down the street anymore. <laughs> get murdered? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or a piece of cake. Yeah, either one. You never know. Or you'll get cake and then get murdered because the cake is poisonous. Oh, shit. Poisonous cake. Hey, it's an epidemic out there. More bang for your buck. Right, right. Up next, from episode 1.5, yeah, we talk about a Disney World disgrace, an ongoing oh, trend. Wow, is this, this is that far back? Yeah, man, yeah. Jeez, man. We talk about an ongoing trend yeah. at Disney World that they don't talk about. I actually had an improper pause in this. You'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about after this clip. TNT, are you ready to hear a story that will just completely destroy your faith in humanity and make you fucking hate everything? Let me brace myself. All right. All right, I'm braced. <laughs> I hear you physically bracing yourself. I do. All right, so this is, the story's a couple years old, so I don't know if it's still going on, but I imagine it is. I don't have any reason to believe it wouldn't be. There was, a, there was an author writing a book about Disney World or Disneyland, whichever one's in Florida. I think it's World. Mm -hmm. They discovered a pretty shocking trend of something going on at Disney. It's basically something for the the one percenters, if you will. You know, the elite, the the richest of the rich, the, you know, 
Uh, douche, what, douche, what is it? Douchebags. It, they're getting black market tour guides, in quotes, for Disney. Wait a minute. Black market tour guides? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, don't make any guesses. I'll, 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 I'll feed you along. <clears throat> so these, these black market tour guides, they cost uh, $130 an hour or just over $1,000 for the entire day. All right. What do you think may constitute a black market tour guide for Disney? You just told me not to guess. Okay, well, uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a, uh, what's, what are they called? Uh, oh, oh my god, I'm drawing a blank. The questions that you're not supposed to answer. Rhetorical, Rhetorical. questions. Yes, I don't know, Jonas. What oh, could they uh, be? I don't know, Jonas. What could a black market tour guide possibly show me at Disneyland? These families are hiring disabled and handicapped people in wheelchairs oh, and motorized oh, scooters yeah. Yeah. to pretend to be in their family to skip to the front of the line. Yeah. yeah I've heard of this before. Have actually. you heard of this, really? So, so <laughs> for the people who haven't, they have, spe- like, they, they have special entrances, auxiliary entrances, at the front of each attraction for people in wheelchairs and motorized scooters. I've never, I don't know this. I've never been to Disney World. You mm-hmm. can, and if you're, if you're handicapped, you can bring up to six people with you in that entrance. Wow. So, so the crazy thing about this is Disney also has VIP tours that they promote and they have fast passes, which get you to skip, which let you skip the line. Not as quick as the handy well, lane. Not only that. Those passes and VIP trips run between three hundred and ten and three hundred and eighty dollars per hour. Oh wow, really? So this you can have you can so you're hiring a disabled person to hang out with you all day for a thousand bucks, or you can pay three hundred and eighty dollars an hour to fast pass. Hmm. Yeah, isn't definitely that, definitely a discount. I mean, isn't that fucking terrible, dude? It, you know it's awful, but like, who, I mean, like who, it, who's worse it, here? But do the, the do the vendor, handicapped people get the money? I mean, I'm sure there's not like a, a like a human trafficking oh, no, for oh, handicapped no. it, it, people. Dude, I haven't got that to that part yet. But oh, there's more. There, oh, there's more. Like so, this service it said was so discreet. It's, they don't have, like, a published phone number. You, the, these rich bitches pass it around, like the soccer moms pass it around within their communities. When you call the phone number, they ask you who referred you before they'll even discuss anything with you. So you have to know that Joan Smith has been a previous customer, and she gave you the phone number... And that's why you're calling, and Joan Smith is your referral. Before they'll even tell you anything about anything about anything. I don't know if it'd make it worse or if it'd make it better. Is that if, like, the guy, the head honcho, the CEO, was, like, some dude in a wheelchair? Funny thing you mentioned that. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Here we go. So there was a – they said they found a guy who – I didn't get his name because – Fuck it. He, I don't want to give the guy any publicity about this. This is disgusting. But um, they reached out to the guy who ran it. Obviously, he didn't respond. But um, mm. but his girlfriend, I guess, is in a, is in a motorized scooter. She's not like mentally disabled. She's physically disabled in some way. Mm-hmm. And uh, so sh- so they 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 don't know, but they think she may be one of the guys who does oh. it. So that's that's kind of probably where it started is she was like, you know, I can get into all these rides. Why don't we hire me out as a guide for Disney and I'll pretend to be their aunt or their mom or their sister or whatever. She gets to ride the rides for free and the rich people get this. So if they did did that every day of the year, they would make a thousand dollars a day through the whole. That's three hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year. Oh my god, that's good money. Yeah, no shit, right? But I mean, it's just, it, but they even tried to reach out to Disney about this, and Disney mm-hmm. didn't, and Disney didn't respond either. Go figure. Um, so of let me ask not. you. So let me ask you two questions. Okay. The first one is: Do you think there's other places that do despicable things like this? 
And if so, where? I mean, wow. obviously, probably like Six Flags and uh, Kennywood and Kings Island and all those like um, Cedar Point. They may do something similar, you know, but not like through the park, obviously, through like a black market, whatever. Do you think, I mean, can you think anywhere else that may, that may have something like this? Uh, off the top of my head, no. You know, it's kind of funny, like, like <laughs> the first thing that, that popped in my head was like, you can rent, rent like a black dude, take you through like a bad neighborhood or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look, do you feel unsafe know. going through the hood? Where's this guy? He'll take you in. He'll introduce you, know, you to everybody. Like, yeah, maybe yeah, I think I would probably do that. You uh, get yeah, like T Bone, the crack dealer, to fucking like escort you through the hood and introduce. This is where I shot the man who didn't pay me for his eight rock. This is where my hosts stand. They got the best DJs in town. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't really find it. It's it's hard, man. Because yeah, is it unfair? Absolutely. Um, is it unfair for Disney to sell their premium tickets at such a high rate? Absolutely. Is yeah. it unfair that only certain people get to take part in it? Absolutely. But it's unfair. Is it illegal? No. No, it's despicable. And if the, the handicap people, if she's running a legitimate business where these people are taking home a decent check. Then, I mean, come that's on. true. I mean, we talked about the woman selling uh, pregnant positive pregnancy tests on Craigslist <laughs> back in episode six. Great episode. Go back and check out episode six. And you and you commended her on being, <laughs> an, being entrepreneur an entrepreneur and being a salesman. So how is uh, that different than than this than this woman slanging yeah. handicap people to fucking pretend <laughs> to be your brother? Sling and handy. I don't, you know, <laughs> look, I honestly, honestly don't know. I, I'm, you know, my, my stomach's not churned. Right, I'm right, more right, conflict, right, right, right. Conflict. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, here's my second part to this. Do you think Disney's in on this, secretly? I think they're secretly letting it happen. Right. Right. I mean, like, you have this is to not think, a Duke development. Like, like, okay. Like, I understand that, like, people bring people handicapped to the, 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 the park all the time. You know what I mean? They get them out that, I mean, to enjoy stuff. You know, I get it. But do you think that every single one of them has six friends? Do you, you think that their friends and, like, <laughs> if, that their friends and family don't take advantage of this? You know, like, hey, we're taking, we're taking Susie to the park. Hey, get your cousins. We're all gonna go and ride with Susie, and we get to go in first because Susie, see, Susie has has her mechanical chair or whatever. You know what I mean? Like people do that like innocently all the time. And and you, you're not gonna be the guy to fucking call them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, let me see a blood test right now. Like Prove some rena cops. Like, excuse me, bitch. Pop them tits out. I gotta see if you're related. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you could determine relation through uh, a breast it was examination. An old, it's an old joke I heard a long time ago about someone trying to tell if a mom and daughter were related. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pop your tits out. I'll go double or nothing on those jokers. Was, I don't know where he gets it from, point. people. <laughs> I don't know. But all right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. From, from total despicableness to something that's actually pretty sweet. Your comments know. were the most despicable part of the <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking as if I were the crony security guard, not that I would really make them pop their tits you out. basically just ordered a handicapped girl to take off her shirt. Oh. You're a terrible, <laughs> terrible person, Jonas. You said it would be a shame if the security <laughs> guard called them out, and I was speaking as a character if I was the handicapped girl getting confronted by a... You were right. My stomach is churned now. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. All right. I'm a piece of shit. Da, 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 da. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Anyways, let me tell uh-huh. you a story, TNT, about a small town in California. All right. Name of this town is, it's a, actually, it's a very small town. It has a population of 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sits on the California-Nevada border. Small. And and what's so special about this town? It's called Nipton, by the way. N-I-P-T-O-N. Uh-huh. Uh, this isn't why it's special, but a side note, uh, it was included in the game 
Fallout New Vegas. It was like recreated for that yeah, game. Yeah, I knew I recognized that name. Yeah, it was, yeah. So, anyways, but it it was just sold for five million dollars. A town of twenty people. Right. It has a hundred and twenty acres. It uh, includes a school building, a hotel, mineral baths, and a general store. Mm-hmm. So, who bought this tiny town? Do you think who who do you think would buy a town like that? <laughs> I don't know, somebody with fucking $5 million. It's a company called American Green. <laughs> They're growing reapers? It is absolutely a weed manufacturing company. And they plan to turn it into like a marijuana tourist destination. Oh, really? Like, like Weed Town USA. Good for them, man. Right. It uh they and they also plan they they plan to invest <clears> three point <throat> five million more dollars into the city to make it more tourist friendly and eco friendly. They're gonna make it run on all renewable energy sources to power the town. Yeah. And they're gonna I imagine have grow shop I imagine they're probably gonna grow stuff there, probably have like, you know, just like food places that you know, rest I mean they're gonna build it up into like a marijuana tourist destination. Uh, I like that idea. I think I like that's that actually idea. really fucking cool. It, it, you know, it's almost like a it'd be like a brewery tour, you know, for beer. But it, you know, I'm sure they'll show you the grocery. They can do like pot tours and you know all that stuff. <laughs> pot tours. Pot tours. <laughs> Are they gonna have a mascot? Yeah, it's just a giant fucking guy in a. Bong. Fuck, it's just a, a bong. <laughs> I don't know. It's like towely, but it's a bong suit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to bring your lighter. <laughs> I'm Bing Bong the Bong. Yeah, the <laughs> water pipe. Bill Bill Bong the Bong. <laughs> they're gonna yeah, they're gonna fucking yeah. That's gonna be the town's slogan. Don't forget your lighter. <laughs> that's a good idea. So, but I thought that was a super cool idea. Like, yeah. I'm I'm totally pro marijuana. I think it it should be legalized across the whole country. Whether you know whether my I personally partake or not, even I, I just think it has so many positive things. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're gonna have to take uh we're gonna have to take one of our uh podcast paychecks and uh invest in that. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Or we could do a podcast on location from Nipton. Yeah. That'd be sweet. I'm gonna talk. start a Kickstarter right now. Maybe yeah, there you go. Some... I'll uh I'll look into that. I'll try to reach out to the company and see what their plans are. Maybe I can try to set something up where we go to like a, a bar or restaurant there and on a trip and do a live a live podcast from the restaurant or something. That'd be pretty sweet. So but anyways, I wanted to follow up like the most despicable story that we've probably ever done on the podcast. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. There's a lot of stuff we've talked about. Can you think of anything more despicable than, than the handicaps? People being like, <laughs> being whoa, so whoa. Like... do not put a comma there. <laughs> Don't put the comma. There. It's all about where you pause. God, oh my God. <laughs> it really <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded Watch so terrible. Punctuation. <laughs> Jesus Christ, if anybody is listening, believe me, I've worked with handicapped people for the majority of my life, oh and my I have nothing but the utmost respect, Jesus. and Jonah shared. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. I, I paused at the worst possible <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. No, Jonas, I can't think of anything worse than the exploitation of handicapped individuals. I just... That would be awful. <laughs> I can't even catch my breath. I'm crying. Oh God! They talk about it's like it's like they talk about the thing where like you go if you say let's eat kids or you say let's eat kids. <laughs> it's totally, yeah, yeah. It's totally the comma. It's totally the comma fucking matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that I've oh wow, <laughs> I need to catch my breath on that one. The Crazy Town Podcast. Man, I need to watch my pauses, TNT. <laughs> it's all about like, hey, let's eat, kids, or let's eat, no, it's kids. A, it, it's good. Or hoping your Uncle Jack off a horse, or <laughs> hoping your Uncle Jack off a horse. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're all... <laughs> Where all, that comma goes that, is important. That comma is very important. So, next up, the last story of this episode, from episode number 22, we talk about a restaurant in Las Vegas called the Heart Attack Grill. Ew. Yeah, you fucking were disgusted by this one. Yeah. Very well should be. It's uh it's an interesting thing. We'll catch you on it's the other a, side. It's an interesting thing. It, it is. Well, I can't wait to see this. Yeah, we'll catch you on the other side.
All right, TNT. Yo. You've heard of people talk about eating food so unhealthy that they're going to have a heart attack when they eat it, right? Yeah, I didn't think that anything could potentially do that, but I mean, yeah. You've heard of like people like, oh, look at this fucking cheeseburger. Oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. So there's a restaurant. It is called the Heart Attack Grill. They guarantee a heart attack with every meal. Dude, wait till you get into this fucking restaurant. It used to be in a – it started in Arizona. It's now on Fremont Street in Vegas, which is old Vegas, not the main strip, the old the old strip, Fremont Street. All right. It, it serves food that is purposely high in fat, sugar, and cholesterol. Purposely. Like so, it, like most food in America. Like, no, like they go beyond. It's a, you know, so things that regularly, if you, if you eat them all the time, can, can go towards having a heart attack, cholesterol, fat, sugars, you know, things like that. This restaurant is hospital themed. Think of like Hooters, but all the waitresses are in nurse you know, outfits with like the cleavage and, you know, shit like that. I'm all right. I'm, I'm on board so far. Okay. All right. Right. The waitresses are dressed as nurses. They take your order, which they call a prescription. What's your prescription? I like that. And then they, and from the customers who they call patients. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You're not supposed to do that in hospitals, by the way. I'm just putting that out there, but go ahead. Call them customers? You don't call them. <laughs> <laughs> call, <laughs> call their... You don't call them patients. What do you call them? Um, <laughs> by their name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, this is like a generalization. They yeah, don't come yeah, in and yeah. go, hey, patient. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Hi, patient. How are you today? You seem kind of glum. Ha, 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 ha. How did that surgery go? Ha, ha, bedside manner. Ha, ha. Basically. Yeah, okay. I got you. Uh, each customer wears a hospital gown. Like oh, as a really? bib. Yeah. All right, cool. And then if you, if you, oh, and you also, once you take your order, they give you the hospital wristband. Like the the identifier. Oh, like. so they know. See, it's like are. the full experience. Yeah, I like, like it it's so far. I right. like oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like medieval times. <laughs> yes, it's like medieval times with slutty nurses. <laughs> so, okay, here's where you get into the the food. If you don't finish what you order, you get paddled by one of the nurses. Wait, what? That now we're getting into some freaky shit. Now this is this is where it takes the turn from being a wholesome family experience to some kinky fetish shit. Yeah, right, right. Oh, so, I so, didn't eat all of my broccoli. Right, well, right. It's like it's like you eat your whole fucking burger and you leave like one bite on the table. You're like, looks like I get a paddling, Nurse Maurice. Nurse Maurice. <laughs> Oh, Maurice. Right. No, Maurice. There's, know what you like. <laughs> so, <laughs> all, it's all dudes in hot pants and no shirts. I forgot to mention that part. Sexy doctors, dude. Yeah. No, no, they're they're nurses. No, sexy nurse doc nurses. Yeah, yeah sexy like, male nurses with their shirt off. Hmm? No, it's uh so you can also buy the paddle that you got beat with if For if you wish. How much? Oh, I didn't say. No? No. But here's where you get into the. Here's where you get into the. What, we have already, we're already there. Our, <laughs> we're already there. Would you? Okay, let me ask you this. What? Would you leave food on your plate so you got piled by the nurse? No, that's Even not Even if my... she was real hot? No, I'm not into that, dude. I don't like to be hit. I like spend it. most of my existence trying not to get hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big not getting hit. <laughs> I'm too. big on not getting I'm hit. I'm not getting, big on getting my nipples bit off or getting hit yeah. with a paddle. Either, yeah. either one. I like to stay safe. So, yeah. No. I'm going to make sure I eat all of my food. All right. What and, they... and if I don't, I'm gonna like shove it on your plate and be like, "Look what he!" <laughs> so they get you. <laughs> oh, little brother experience. Yeah. So, right. so what do they got on the menu, dude? Well, that's what I'm actually getting into right now. I Look figured as much. Okay, so you can order burgers. Any, you can order a single, you can order a double, a triple, all the way up to an octuple burger. So you eight get eight patties. eight fucking patties. Is you can order at once. It ranges anywhere from the smallest burger you can get is eight ounces. The smallest. Yes, this is a half pound burger, and then the largest it says thirty two ounces, which doesn't make sense because if they're half pound patties and you have eight, that would be sixty four ounces of meat. But don't don't let me. I mean, I guess it. if you're getting like three fucking patties of this, but I guess if you're getting the eight patty, maybe they're only quarter pound patties because I don't even think you could stack eight fucking patties that high. Wow. That, Eight half pound patties. That is the most American shit I've ever. Oh, had I know, right? Life. Well, I guess if you flatten the patties out so like they're wide and thin, <laughs> so instead of it being like a thick patty that's like you know like th- three inches in diameter, you can make the patty like six inches in the diameter, but it would only be like a quarter inch, half inch thick. 
I'm not, yo, look, man, I don't, I don't know my patty, patty math. My patty math is off. You're all about the patty math. Well, I'm trying to figure out how you stack eight fucking patties <laughs> high, dude. I don't, wastefully. Where would you, okay, if you went there? A hundred percent wastefully. Well, I know you don't eat a lot of meat. No, I'm not a big guy on that stuff. But if you went there. What? Would you get a cor- would you get a quadruple burger? There's no why for what so I can not eat it all. Thanks. You then you get paddled. No, <laughs> this is that I'm off. I'm done with this restaurant. Oh. <laughs> I was I was all for it, and now you've, you've driven me away. Oh, because now you're basically saying is that you're going to hit me if I don't eat <laughs> too much fucking food. You eat like you order like a glutton, and then if you don't eat it all, this, you get hit. Exactly, man. This is this restaurant is teaching all the wrong lessons. Well, that's the point of it. It actually is. It's a controversial restaurant because it's it promotes fucking nasty. Not nasty. Make sure the food tastes great, but gluttonism, gluttonism, everything that America stands for. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Right. So they it's also have fucking nuts. They also have flatliner fries, is what they call. What's them. on the flat lines? Well, they're cooked in pure lard. Okay. And you're unlimited. So on top of your eight patty burger, you can get unlimited fries cooked in pure lard. All right. I mean, oh, they usually use vegetable oil. Right. It's there. like just fucking fat is what they fry. Oh, I'm, yeah, I know what I bet is. those fries taste amazing, though. I was gonna say. <laughs> you're gonna say like, I'm, not, I'm not even mad at the fries. You say eight burgers. I'm like, that's fucked up. You say fries cooked in pure fat. I'm like, well, you know, it probably makes them taste really good. <laughs> it probably does. They also serve... They have beer there. You don't say. Tequila. It's the only liquor they serve is tequila. Really? They have butterfat milkshakes. Butterfat milk. There's nothing about that sounds enticing. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I didn't quite understand that either, but maybe they just use like. Not milk, maybe? Oh, they maybe, yeah, maybe they just use like heavy cream or or butterfat. Buttermilk or something. Yeah, like in your milk, because it's like the, the most, like, like the worst kind of milk possible. Ew. And they also sell that Mexican Coke in the bottle. It's made with pure cane sugar. Mexican. They call it Mexican Coke because it's made in Mexico. It's made with pure cane sugar instead of like – It's just Coca-Cola. It's Coca-Cola, but it's made with pure cane sugar instead of like – Well, they sell those in the stores. Though. Yeah, it's, but that's called Mexican Coke too. And they have – they do fancy – they even have it at like my work. They sell it in the cafeteria. It's called Mexican Coke. I've never heard of this Mexican Coke. You've never heard of that? No. It's not like a racist, a racist thing. A it's, it's a location bit. thing. It's – Thing. They call ours American Coke in Mexico. Why well, they call it Mexican pizza? Because ah. wait, why do they call it Mexican pizza? Yeah, that's a fucking. Yeah, I've never felt more awkward than I went to a Taco Bell and I ordered a Mexican pizza, and there's a like a real Mexican guy there. Like, wouldn't that be awkward? Like, let me have a pizza. Why can't I just say pizza? Did you? That's what you should have said. He would have been like, "Sir, we don't serve pizza here." You'd be like. Well, I need a Mexican pizza. Okay, we have Mexican pizza. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. That menu sounds pretty gross so far. Well, I think that's all they have. Like, it's just burgers, fries, and fucking butterfilt, mi- butterfat milkshake. Oh, they, you can also order cigarettes. <laughs> you can just, again, you can smoke inside a restaurant. I probably. I don't know. Yeah. Well, in Vegas, yeah, you can smoke inside in Vegas because casinos you can smoke inside. So I'm sure you can. Right. And they also have candy cigarettes for the kids. Oh, good. We, we want your kids to show up, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh and then, uh, oh, I forgot to mention the uh, the best part. I, 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 I Not really the best part, but if you weigh over hundred th- over 350 pounds, you eat for free. Get the fuck out of here, weigh bitch. You can weigh in before you order, and if you weigh over 350, your meal is free. So fucking shut this place down, dude. So this like, place, place so like, the go. biggest people in the world can go there and just keep getting bigger and just eat for free. Like, if you okay, if you were like a really big dude and you like were poor, wouldn't you just go here every day and eat for free? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it I cuts down sh- on your grocery bill, but you're gonna die. Well, right, it's a heart attack oh, grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess uh, this restaurant, I read there was a couple things where like. Uh, like the owner, the guy who was a spokesman, was like five hundred and fifty pounds or something. Mm. Uh, he didn't die of a heart attack; he died of like something else. Uh, it was like pneumonia or something. And then, but there was uh, at one point somebody did have a heart attack out front at the bus stop oh, in front of it. Really open. Yeah, no, nobody has had one inside. I don't yeah, think yet. Um, but uh, also with this, there was a prize. A prize? Yes. If you finish a triple or above burger. 
when you are done with your meal, the the nurse will wheel you out to your car in a wheelchair. <laughs> That's the prize for the fucking for being such a gluttonous person. Yo, this place is the devil. It is, dude. This is I kind of want to go there in Vegas. I, I kind of do. I would never. I would get like a fucking salad. You get you get French fries <laughs> or fried pickles. You guys got fried pickles? You get French fries. You get limited fries there. No, dude. I want a salad. Oh man! They're like, we don't have that. They'll throw lettuce at you. Be like, eat it off the floor, you filthy pig. They'll just pour ranch on your head. Be like, there you go, bitch. Yeah, I don't want to go there. I don't. So let me tell you about this one burger they have before right. we before we wrap up the, this the octuple. No, this is it's called the quadruple bypass burger. Oh shit! Four half pound patties. So two, two pounds, pounds of, of meat. meat. Twenty strips of bacon. 20 strips of bacon, so another half pound of meat. Yeah, ooh, that might be a full pound of bacon. 20 strips? Because if you think you order, you get a pound of bacon from the store, there's not 20 strips in a package. Yeah, but you drain off most of the water when you cook it. Either way, all right, so let's just say we're up to 30. Yeah, we'll say two and a half pounds. Two and a half pounds. Eight slices of American cheese. Okay, so that's That's another 500 calories. (laughs) That's way too much. Uh, A whole tomato. Throw some, throw some a things. whole tomato? Not like, like I slice. think they slice it and put it on, so it ends up being a full tomato. Oh, so they do and have half veggies. an onion. They do have vegetables, and it's served on a lard buttered bun. Guess how many calories it has? The bun or the sandwich? The entire sandwich. What I just read off to you. Uh, three thousand calories. Nine thousand nine hundred eighty-two calories. Nope, not doing it. That's like five days worth of calories. Why? <laughs> Why? Man, what's the unhealthiest thing you've ever eaten? Dude, the, the thought of that is the most <laughs> unhealthy thing that I've ever had go through my Dude, body. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to order this triple bypass. Oh, I like, I, I wouldn't be able box. to eat it. Yeah. I wonder how much it costs. Yeah, that's true. You don't, like, but you don't know prices. It's probably like 20 bucks. 20 bucks? I don't know, for two and a half pounds of meat? Not yeah, I mean, cooking. I mean... Like, that, that's not a burger that you pick up and eat. You're going to need a knife and a fork. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it would be probably six inches off the fucking table. Like, it would oh probably... Oh, God. Dude, that's fucking ridiculous. Like, I wonder if you can split it. Like, if I could go there with someone and, like, me and, like, a whole table could just, like, fork at it and just, like, pull off pieces. Oh, you could, like, eat. cut it in a slice. Yeah. It's like, like a, burger cake. Like a cake. Yeah. <laughs> So gross. Can you think of anything that you've made that was like really unhealthy like that? Like so, like even back when you ate meat and shit all the time and bullshit. Like if you think of, have you ever thought of anything you even went to go get or you've made at home that was just like, like I don't think so, man. I think probably most unhealthy thing that I've taken like in my life would be like pizza with like a bunch of meat on it. Oh, or something like a like big, that. like a whole pizza. Like yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, that's that's a lot of calories. I've done that before. Like back in the day, I used to make. Bur- Sometimes I would make cheeseburgers at home that were similar to this, but with one patty, and it would be like a quarter of this. You know what I mean? It would be like a half pound patty with two pieces of American cheese and then a few strips of bacon. Not like twenty. I mean, I would make it at home. I wouldn't put it on lard buns or whatever. But I mean, it would basically be like. So it may have been. I doubt it was two thousand calories though. For, no, for that, I mean, probably just, not. But yeah, nine I mean, thousand calories. The Crazy Town Podcast. A nine thousand calorie cheeseburger. That's a bit much. I like the fact that they also will wheel you out in a wheelchair if you eat some things there. I don't, like, I don't see if you're that. over 350 pounds, you eat for free. What, what's what's alluring about that? I really like bacon, cheese, and beef all together. It's so good. <laughs> I don't need a truckload of it though. <laughs> it's all about the gluttonous part of life. But TNT, what? This is the end of uh, Mediocre Moments Volume Five. Oh, is is this the end? Is this the end? No, not forever. We'll be oh. back again with episode with oh, volume oh, okay. six. All right. Well, I'm, I'm fine with but that. But make sure you follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash crazy town media. Our YouTube channel, crazy town media as well. All of our gaming and podcasts and everything else all in one place. Also on Twitter at crazy town media. We'll be back next week with mediocre moments volume six. Can you not wait, TNT, to find out what's on that? Dude, I'm holding the horns up right now. Devil horns, rock and roll, fucking. Oh, I thought they were like Aries or something, right? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't worship the devil now, do I? Uh, yes. <laughs> you listen to Roman <laughs> Manson one time, bitch. so you're automatically your devil. Oh, worshiper. man. For TNT Dynamite and for Jonas, we 
R. Out. over.